going on, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of the Yankee Football Podcast. Uh, we got all three of you boys back. Uh, it's been a busy couple of weeks. We've been talking to all sorts of people outside, but we're going to keep this episode in-house. Yes, sir. Um, the other people are entirely too smart, educated, and uh, well-resourced for us. So uh, we're back to your reg- regularly scheduled shithousery. Yes. Um, yeah, I we got to dumb first- it down. We got to dumb it down. I mean, uh, no offense to our audience, but never mind. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> No, they Jeez. know. They know. And we realize I'm, that our boys uh, 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 over on the West Coast and across across the pond, they're a little too educated for us. So Yeah. They're referencing way too many historical moments in the world of football that, quite frankly, we're not – we're not uh, we have no memory and recollection of, uh, to be yeah. honest. So, let, yeah, like, let's get back. Who the hell back. are the Seattle Sounders? Exactly. I have no idea. The second the man said CONCACAP Champions League, he lost me completely. I said The World Cup is happening in a place called uh, Qatar, allegedly. (laughs) Qatar, maybe? I don't know. Never heard. I just know it's got a lot of sand and apparently it's pretty hot. And Casper the Ghost is the logo for the uh, the tournament. Well, if they got oil over there, you know us Americans will uh, be dying to get over there as quickly as we can. Yeah, That looks bad on me as an American not knowing about this country that allegedly has a lot of oil, so... Forgive me. Yeah. Anyway, yes. the, the first the first topic of uh, of this episode, uh, let's jump right into it. Um, which team do you guys think won the uh, the transfer window so far? We've still got time, right? Yeah, I think. Oh God, God damn it! It pains me to say it. Obviously, it's not over yet. Transfer window. We still got a couple weeks left, but if it ended today. I think it'd be Arsenal. Wow. Okay. I think it'd be Arsenal. Okay. That's a good I, shot. I think if I can summarize in short, it's because they upgraded three positions of need. Fullback, attacking midfielder, and the biggest problem they had was goal scoring. Yep. Lacazette, absolute flop, <clears throat> French fraud. Yeah. Now he's back eating baguettes in France, where he probably should have been the entire time. And they bring in... They don't bring in a bunch of like, oh, here's this random bloke from Croatia and Austria. I wonder if he'll be able to score 15 goals. No, they bring over Zinchenko and Gabriel Jesus, two serial winners in the Prem. And not just serial winners, individual performers in the Prem. And they bring over Vieira. I think his name is Vieira. I forgot his name. Lad from Porto. That guy's a little Mm -hmm. more of a mystery. And then they... And then they even get the punt right, you know? Like, every single transfer window, I feel like the big teams, they need to have, like, one gamble. Like, just sign one 18-year-old from South America and pray that he'll he'll pan out. It's only going to cost you two mil anyways. Just fucking do it. That's what they did with that winger, um, the Brazilian guy. And they got Matt Turner. Yeah. So, honestly, I think they checked every goddamn box. It looks like they might get Yuri Tielemans, too. And if they do that, if they get Tielemans, goddamn it. Oh, I haven't seen that rumor. Yeah, that's a rumor. So T- 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 I know is for sure gone though, right? Like he wants out. He's leaving this transfer window. It's I I wouldn't if I'm Lester, I'd sell because his contract expires. But I mean, Rogers might be like, "Yo, I don't have another option. We got to keep this man and just accept that we not making money off him at all." Um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, obviously I'm a Spurs guy. Y'all can see the kit on my chest, but I gotta say Arsenal, dude. And it they, they did do some man. damn good business. Uh, I will say the Zinchenko and uh, Jesus pickup are really, really awesome. Um, I, I will, I will say, I had a, a lot of hype for Jesus when he first came over. Um, I mean, it was just insane. Eight, eight, 18 year old Brazilian who had a pretty decent uh, showing in 2018. Um, like he's just, he's just fantastic. It looked good on paper. He didn't really pan out. I don't think he fit our team that well, but I do think that with his recent confidence and playing underneath Arteta again. Like, he's got just the right amount of new challenge that's going to spike that ego and just a comfortable familiarity with working with Arteta. And, oh, my God. I Yeah, I think that was that's the perfect club for him. It's the perfect sighting. I think him and Odegaard are about to explode together yeah. next season. Dude, I, I think wish it's I could really fucking dangerous. disagree. I literally can't. Yeah. I cannot disagree with that. But we'll anyways. finally see how good Odegaard actually is. And he was really good last season, but he, he didn't have anyone to pass to. You know, he could be creative all he wanted to, and those guys couldn't score. Look, Damn, it's so hard. They didn't to know what find, the goal was. It, yeah. You, a proven striker is so difficult. 
And yeah, Jesus not, might not be a superstar, but quite frankly, he doesn't have I think he have could to. be in Arsenal. He I think could he be. could be. He could be, but even if he's not, even if he's just good, a top four is more than, than reasonable oh, for yeah. Arsenal and probably yeah. a domestic cup. If he turns out to be great or or superstar level, bro, they they could literally challenge in a year or two. They're, they're going to be threatening kidding. in European football for sure when they get back. Because right now it's not a matter of if it's 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 when like that that is guaranteed. Yeah, Champions yeah. League time. I think they me. will do very well domestically, and not to make this an Arsenal discussion, but I still think European football wise, I don't think they have the depth. You know, that's necessary to get through some of those uh, competitions and play domestic. I think they got to focus. They're young. They're really young. They are they can, young they for threaten. sure. But but, uh, you know, as soon as you start playing European football very, uh, very seriously, your guys get injured. I, I think they're going to knock somebody out. I think they're going to upset somebody and it's going to be it's going to be nice. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm going to watch their career with great interest. Not that I'm excited about it. I don't think any of us are happy about uh, no. <laughs> that window that they had, no. but um, it's going to make the the prem more exciting. And uh, you know, yes. best kits, best transfer window. And in that respect, it's it's a good thing for the yeah. excitement of the league. I yes. agree. And That's honestly, for, for for the rivalry between Spurs and Arsenal, it's also a good thing. Because that is going to pop off, dude. It's going to be Ooh. insane. It's going to be insane. I mean, both of these legs could easily be like four three games mm -hmm. yeah i For mean sure. both defenses god help questionable me. it's gonna not, not only i mean you could have a great defense how are you gonna stop the front three of both these teams i think spurs is still better and i think it is better if you if you disagree with that you're a bell end but arsenal's is still very good very very good so anybody's gonna struggle holding these guys back arsenal's i think ramsdale's oh no until, you go until romero fucking uh studs up slide tackles in on Jesus, breaks his knee backwards and uh sends them straight back to the to the bottom but, but, half of the league. But even on the defensive exactly. end they got William Saliba back on loan. And the guy like when they signed him he was a promising prospect but he was just obviously not ready physically for the prem. But he's played well in the preseason and he's just going to be more depth in that back line. So if Ben yeah. White falls off, which he might, you know, he might get injured, he's got some injury problems, he can step in there. And and Gabriel well, I think he's overrated by Arsenal fans. He's a solid center back. You know, definitely better than Tyrone Mings. Right, Jake? But, um, hey, so that's why I think get, I'm not a hater. You just, I just don't think he's England's best center back. But anyway, let's not take it back to the You're fucking three lines starting <laughs> 11. Um, so Arsenal, long story short, that's who I think. What about you guys? Do you agree with me? I'm I'm really pleasantly surprised, uh, or not surprised, but I'm really pleased with uh, Man City's. Uh, just wait for the record. Shut the this, fuck No, 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 chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about to fucking suck their dick. Oh for fucking my you God. are, you are no, a I'm dick rider. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> ah! um, I, are we, are we, are we limiting this to uh, just prem teams? Yeah. Okay, word. Never mind. Um, then yeah, I was gonna say uh Man see fucking hell, bro. No, no, come on. They got bro. they got they literally put a stranglehold on the center defensive mid market. Like we literally have a monopoly. We have Calvin Phillips and fucking um uh Rodri. Like that is not people aren't fucking getting anything through that. And now with our fucking true number nine there, we have uh we have uh, Alvarez on the right wing. Like we we trimmed some of the fat. We've still got fucking Mares. Like it's it's nasty. It was it was honestly dominant. It's like when you win the league again, and you're like, what do I even fucking buy now? On on FIFA career mode, you're just like, what do I do now? And you just shoot the fucking upcoming talents that your five star yeah. scouts told you that are gonna blow up. Like I I, I don't I don't know. I I was really uh happy with it i don't think they're all gonna pop off this season i've said that before so i'm not gonna harp on it but i think it it solidly uh cements us for the, the next five six years at least like i think the signings were good but if i'm gonna give a team like best transfer window i'm gonna be looking at how much have these signings at least on paper improved the team and i think holland honestly this might be a hot take i think he's a luxury signing like I don't think you need Erling Holland. No, to win we, we didn't. And I, I, 
Uh, to win the Champions League, I think you need an out and out big moment goal scorer, and Gundogan yeah. can't can't do it all by himself. Like Mares has his moments, but uh, they're they're pretty few and far between, just because of uh, how little ball time he gets with Jack Grealish now. Like mm-hmm. I think that I, I think that we need like an out and out nine that's going to s- centralize our attack, who's going to come up in these big moments and who can compete physically. Because like if you look at our front our front three and even some of our attacking midfielders, like the only big physical presence is like Kevin De Bruyne. And he's not even that big. You know what I'm saying? Like you need somebody who's going to bully these boys and who's going to put like scary Rudiger and Real Madrid defenders on on their asses. Like you need somebody who's going to do that. And I think that Holland's going to be able to pull through on that. Eventually. I'm not, I don't have huge hopes now. Saw some fucking idiot on Twitter, and he was like, we're going to win the Champions League. We're going to win the Prem. Holland's going to score 50 goals all competitions. I was like, God. I wanted to say. Yeah, that ain't happening. I wanted to bust my big boy words out on social media, but that never goes over well. So, yeah. I held my tongue. What do you you think? You think City had the best transfer window so far, Jake? I think City had a very good bit of business with selling players off. I don't think that they really brought in players on paper, as you were saying, Jack, to help out the full team cohesiveness, you know, to help them go beyond and win the Champions League finally. I don't know if Holland's that guy who's going to solely do that for you. Um, well, so, most of these signings, they're depth signings. You know, like Calvin Phillips, he's not starting. He's not better than Rodri. I love Calvin Phillips. No, 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 no. Yeah, he's not I complete, than completely agree. But I don't think Rodri's going to be there forever. Like, I don't think he's going to be there forever. He is a depth signing, and we need that because we like to challenge for all trophies. Right. Yes, and in, in that respect, totally agree. But again, I'll just reference my earlier point. I just, I think City have improved, but not nearly as much as Arsenal have improved, in my opinion. That's oh, yeah. With Arsenal. To- and that's totally fair. That's totally I'm not disagreeing with you. I know people want to see here see us, you know, me talking shit to you right now, but I I agree. It's good, but I'm really happy with cities. I thought it was good. I was like, yeah, they did quite literally everything that I would have done. So it's I because can't you're argue a, with it. you're an absolute stan. Jake, uh who do you think had the best transfer window so far? Man United. Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> You guys were so, your favorite teams. I went with my arch rival. <laughs> so I was going to say Spurs, but not for any real reason other than they're bringing Perisic back into the Prem. Back into the Prem? Has he been in the Prem before? I thought he has, but actually now that I'm thinking about that, he hasn't. I, for some reason, I thought he played for Southampton. but I don't think so. But Bringing a Croatian cool. back to the Prem. It's always the a dream of mine to see those Eastern Europeans. The play Prem is missing the Croatians with the civilized folk in England. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, my my answer to uh, Jack's anguish is going to be Leeds. Actually, all right, you got to explain that shit to me. They they balled out. It's on paper. You know, we were talking about on paper. You uh-huh. sell two guys for over a hundred million. And you bring in five players for not only depth and some gambles and stuff like that, but I think overall it should help their cause in at least staying mid table this year. You know, I don't think they should have any aspirations to be, you know, shooting for Europa or Champions League spots at this point. They just need to survive. And I think Jesse Marsh brought in a, a good fair amount of uh, guys to do that with his big his his big uh, sells. On paper, I think they've had a good transfer window. Um, I still have no faith in Leeds United whatsoever, as long as Jesse Marsh. But you there. were basing that off of the manager. This is yes. me just yes. looking at like. Very black and white transfer window, dollar for dollar, like business. That, He's got yeah. like a lot of weapons yeah. now. He brought in a yep. shit ton of pieces. Yeah, yep. He's got a lot to... more stuff. And and he had signings all across from uh, at, uh, offense to defense, you know. The signing across that the I board. don't like is the Luis Sinistera guy from Colombia. 
Mm-hmm. I think the I think the fee is too much. Is it twenty eight mil or something? Crazy, bro. The and they probably play for Colombia. Like, what the fuck? Like these valuations are insane. I think I think yeah. he's got good players, but they overpaid a lot. Even Brendan Aronson. What what the hell was that fee? Like, he's good. He was in the twenties, right? High twenties. Twenty. Oh, it was thirty six <clears throat> million. Oh shit. Well, thirty six million for Brendan Aronson. So I think they got good pieces. But I think they overpaid to get that, and perhaps they had to overpay because they're not in a uh, in a position to really challenge for anything. So maybe you do have to overpay to acquire those assets. So I'll give you that, and I do think you know they they brought in like six dudes. So and they need that depth, man, because they were decimated last season. Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so I think at one point they were playing like academy guys who had never gotten a first team start, and like two of them starting in the game or something. So okay, I think that's a good shout. I, I still have no faith, but I think that's a good shout. On paper, we'll see. On paper, and that's what I base this off of. On paper, yeah. Let's see if the U.S. men's national team can keep leads in the prem. We'll do an update uh, during the January transfer window for that one. Yeah. Um. Okay. Let's get down to individual players now. What do you think, Connor, to start with you? Most underrated off-season move. Well, you're going to be pissed off at me for this because I thought we were doing uh, teams outside of the prem as well. Um, so this is going to be a little bit of a palate cleanser. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> just say it. Just say it. Uh, just say it's, just say it's, it's Calvin shot. Phillips. Just say you think it's Calvin Phillips. <laughs> No, I'm talking team outside of the Prem. I didn't read the instructions carefully enough. Um, uh, Molina to Atletico. I think that's a really good fucking signing. We don't have to talk about it a lot. It's not what the episode's about. But um, I think that dude (laughs) is going to do really fucking well over there. I think he's a fucking stud, and he's going over there. He's internationally capped. They got him for a fucking bargain. And, um, yeah, yeah, he's going to be playing on the right side, right next to uh, to DePaul. That's going to be... That's going to be insane. It's going to pop off for Atletico. I can't wait to title this video Premier League Predictions. And then Connor comes over here referencing an Atletico Madrid (laughs) transfer. What the fuck? (laughs) And to be fair, I love that move as well. But now it's just not the move. It's just not the time. No, now it's not the time. All right. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to get Jake, you give yours. I'll give mine. Connor, during that time. At least just bullshit uh, a Premier League uh, selection for that one. So, Jake, let's move on to you. Who do you think is the most underrated uh, Premier League move this window so far? Dare I say Gaga for Chelsea? The most underrated? Okay, explain that one again. I'm fucking with you. I think he's overrated, not underrated. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. And that's Twitter's fault. Let's be let's be honest about that. <laughs> that is U.S. Men's National Team you Twitter. Think? Yeah. Well, what's weird is that I don't even think he has a cap for the U.S. And he's like, God, this guy's a god. He's better than Tim Howard already. What do he go for? Ten mil? Ten mil? Twelve mil? Something like that? It was a hefty fee. Like it, it was like a million for the amount of years on the dude's age or something. Yeah, so pretty much like ten or twelve. Yeah. Um, surprisingly, and I didn't think about this before. I put Mark Roca for Leeds again. What the? You're a stan. I am a stan, which is Jesus weird because Christ. Leeds and Man U have a historic rivalry with each other. Um, and I have an infatuation with Mark Roca because of FM22 Football Manager. <laughs> I signed that fool, <laughs> and he's a he's a goddamn beast in that game. And he starts all my games, scores bangers from the halfway line. I, I, I mean, I mean, it's insane. Um, but in I feel football manager in football manager now, IRL. I think it's a good, it's a good signing when you get someone from Bayern for around the ten mil mark. You know, like, yeah, he wasn't a starter per se, but he's been through their through their academy and through their training, uh, through their youth teams. And he's proven to be someone with the high ceiling there. So I'm kind of curious to see how it'll go. And it's a low risk gamble for a very low fee in my mind. I thought Mark Rocco was a good move, but it's not even in my top 15. 
to be honest with you. I mean, that's because you're racist. That doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> Isn't he Spanish or something? Like, yeah, he's, but anyways, he's Spanish. Oh god, I'm shocked <clears throat> that uh, you didn't have the person that I have, which I think is on paper before we kick a ball in the Premier League regular season. I think it's hands down the best move so far, and that's Christian Eriksen to Manchester United. I mean, that's a good one to get Christian See, Erickson. That's, that's not underrated, though. Like everyone knows that that was uh, an amazing move. I don't think so, dude. Look at you. How, don't think so? I, I don't. I, I don't I think, rate it as an incredible move. I, I think Twitter incredible. talked about it for about five minutes and then went back to talking about how godly Lisandro Martinez is. Maybe I don't think it got the hype it deserved at all. Maybe I have more view into that because i see a lot more united fans like interactions and people you know commenting on that stuff and i think the whole fan base can agree that we got a hell of a deal by by picking them up on the free it's an absolute steal and yeah i don't follow a bunch of man U accounts but i think the fact that this isn't a consensus top three transfer is disturbing and shows that nobody really watched spurs while he was there under Mauricio Pochettino being the best attacking midfielder in the league. Like there used to be this like really fun and cute Ozil Erickson debate, even though Erickson was clear literally the entire time. Like it wasn't even a comparison. He goes to Brentford, shows that he still got all the sauce and then flirts with a reunion with Tottenham. We end up apparently on our end, we kind of just left him on red, which is very disappointing to hear from the club. And he goes, he goes, to you guys on a free. I mean, if this was a guy, if Christian Eriksen is a player with, let's say, four years left on his contract, I mean, this is like a $45 million player, $50 million transfer. And you got him on a free. And and honestly, what it's going to do for the team, what it's going to do for Rashford and all those guys, and honestly, even Bruno Fernandes, because now he's going to have some competition as a creative midfielder. And yep. Eriksen, dude, I mean, the guy... Bruno Fernandez is a very high risk, high reward player. Erickson, his, his accuracy and his decision making and his turnover rate is just far superior to Fernandez. So I think it's going to even help out uh, McFred if those guys stick around when you guys play out the rest of your games um, this season. I, I mean, it's a great move. I literally can't think of a single negative about it unless they're paying him like two mil weekly salary, which I don't think they are, but. Even then, it would still be a goddamn steal. So that's yeah. That's what I'm well, with. finally, United got a steal like that after uh, Karma. Yeah, you know, maybe we we swapped Karma on this one for uh, our Alexis Sanchez and uh, Lukaku signings a couple years yeah. back. We finally needed one on the free. You did. You needed a good, high-profile player on a free. It's about damn time. And honestly, I wish him the best. At, at Man United, because he he deserves it. Um, of course, wish that he went to Spurs. We certainly need a creative midfielder, but that's fine. Hopefully, we get James Madison. Uh, Connor, have you had enough time to find somebody? I have. I was gonna go around and like I I was searching around to, to see if there was like a, a smaller name that I could um, reasonably you know pull out of my ass. But I think uh, locking down Felipe Coutinho for uh, Aston Villa. I think that's solid. I know, I know it's it's really hyped up when he was on loan, and it's it's kind of a uh, a win regardless. But the fact that they locked that down, they cemented him. The guy looks like he's happy to be back in the prem, and he is. The guy's thriving, and I, I really think he's going to be a crucial piece um, there. And and nobody really talks about it enough. Like that's that's a huge move to cement him there. Everybody mm -hmm. kind of saw it coming and that he was happy but it's it's a match made in heaven i think they're going to come up with a shit ton more songs with him and he's gonna he's gonna play a crucial piece for uh for aston villa this coming season so that's kind of my cold take there no that's a good shout i um he was actually a, one of the people i was considering because i feel like people don't understand how important it is for aston villa and really any club outside of the top six to keep a truly world-class player on the roster like these guys don't grow yes. on trees and the fact that you locked him down and what was the final fee it was like 20 something mil super I probably cheap know this. uh a I, fraction I, of what he was sold to barcelona for 22 million yeah 22, 22 i mean million, that is yeah. 
that's great business. I think Even that's if, with I think that's with like additives and add-ons. Like I crazy. think the actual price was closer to like fifteen. Yeah, that like, is crazy. That is crazy. I mean, let's say he only plays twenty five games this season. Still worth it. Oh, still yeah. still worth it in my opinion. Just what he what he gives you those individual moments. I mean, if you're Aston Villa, you got to be super happy about that. And I think the negative to hit that side is I think there's going to be some real pressure on Steven Gerrard. To actually yes. do something and not be trash this, again. This is his actual. This is his actual yeah. season. You know they underperformed for a while. They had a really good run of games. What near the end they were kind of on fire there. But, I don't know um, if they were ever on fire, but I thought they that were. they had like a really good run of form in like the last little bit of the season that cemented them in relevance. You might be. I don't remember that. I remember them winning like the first two games okay. under Gerard. Yeah. It was like new manager bounce, and then they didn't win one in like seven. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah, uh, I'm not Regardless, sold on Steven Gerrard. I, I'm not totally sold either, but this is make or break. And and that's a huge piece. That's a huge piece for him to secure and cement in order to, um, you know, uh, bring the squad into relevance. So he's he's got the tools. We'll see what he can do with them, you know. Okay, this was not on the list, but I'm going to ask you guys, and let's discuss this very briefly. What are y'all's thoughts on Jesse Lingard's nodding him on a free? I think it's were- great for United. Fucking great for United to get that motherfucker off the payroll, get him out of the social medias, get him out of my head. He was living there rent free. <laughs> He's been living there rent free. He's been living there rent free. I don't have to see his goddamn dance moves. Him and Pogba shaking their asses in the locker room after we get our asses beat 6 0 by some rando Brentford team, probably. Oh, so. I think it's good. Just for I, I, United. You think it's good for Nottingham Forest? I think, I think it's, it's good, good for, for Nottingham Forest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they actually brought in 12 players. Dude, they brought That's in a insane. new team. Yeah. They literally yeah. signed a new starting 11. They're really trying to stay in the prem this time around. And yeah. hopefully uh, they can swap places with Everton. Because Everton going down, baby. I'm sticking <laughs> by that. Them and Leeds. They going down. Um no, nah, they really did. More, they really did mortgage their entire future on this season. Like, yeah, they, they spent like a oh, hundred yeah. mil. They're one of the top spenders. It's crazy. Yeah, no, uh, this, what do you think? This transfer it? window popped yeah. off. I I do agree. It's a good move. Um, I I think he's probably the most important transfer that they've had. I don't know if he'll be the best transfer that they make. Um, with all the guys that they brought in, I think there's too much. Uh, um, too many moving pieces there for anybody to really predict who will be their best. But I think he'll push everybody to perform a little bit better. And um, he's a young guy. You know, he's a young guy. He's got good energy. And, you know, maybe that energy is bad in a, in a locker room like Man United's. But You're it's, it's going to give. He's almost 30. He is? He's 29. He's, a, damn. he's an old motherfucker. Yeah. Damn. damn. Yeah, well, you've he seen, act you've like seen he's too young. many of those footy memes on Twitter saying that. Like, I what do they been. always say? Like. He's still he's still young. Give him time or something. Like yeah. <laughs> I fucking love those. I can't lie. I got this man's against. time has passed. It's yeah. You Look, could say that. You could regardless, say that. the man's the man's got a youthful energy, and he's gonna give these guys uh, a good, you know, something something to take home when they get their fucking asses clapped in a fucking given game. You know, they're 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 gonna have like a a spot of sunshine in the locker room. Maybe he'll get everybody in. They'll do some TikTok dances, and he'll keep them from relegation. But I, I think that's a good locker room move for them, and a good locker room move to get him out of Man United. Could be. It's, le- it's could less be pressure, a, uh, and I think social he, he, PR he nightmare for Nottingham Forest that they're probably not prepared for. Yeah, maybe. I think Nottingham Forest can take all the attention, or would take all the attention that they can get, dude. I think you guys, I think you'd be a mad disrespectful, Jake. I think this is a great fucking move for Nottingham Forest and for Jesse Lingard. Because one, he's probably going to start. He can actually yeah. revive his career. Like, if there's ever a time that he's going to make the England squad again, it's right now with Nottingham I don't Forest. I don't know if he'll it ever make gonna, the England squad I didn't, again. I, I don't but. think he will. But if there's a situation where he's got a 20% chance, 25% chance, he was probably Nottingham Forest. Maybe you could argue he goes back to West Ham. But I don't know. If he starts at West Ham, they might be too stacked in the midfield. I don't know. Yeah. And um, for Nottingham Forest, I think you get a guy, former England international, high-profile player, proven in the Prem. Like, he did it for West Ham. 
for whatever reason, he, and United, ma- and United, he he was decent for yeah, United yeah, at that was. time. He was. I mean, y'all are just like by far the most toxic club in world football. Like it's just absolute fucking cesspool over there. I would never sign for United. I don't care how much money's on the table. Like it's just a shit show. It's calamitous over there. But now he's gotten out of that. He can breathe again. He can actually do a couple of dance moves without being judged by a hundred thousand Twitter United's trolls. Fault. It's, it's definitely less pressure. United's fault. I think it's part of it pressure. is United's fault. Absolutely. Definitely United's it's, fault. I think they share a big bulk of the blame definitely and United's how they honestly kind of like mentally murder a lot of their players. But anyway, that's a different discussion. Um, I think this is honestly an A-plus move. And also for Nottingham Forest, like, Connor, like you said, even if they lose games badly, you could, you, I think it's fair to say Jesse Lingard is a star. Whether that's deserved or not, I think he's a star. And now you got a star on the team. You got a reason for away fans to travel and pay money to go see you guys play. You're going to be bringing in merch sales. And I think from the PR stuff, I think having a guy like Lingard on the team is a good thing for a club like Nottingham Forest. I think it's a distraction if you have yeah. like Champions League aspirations. If you're like survive in the Prem, get tenth, make a cup run, I think it's a good thing. So and he's got he's going to push those younger guys to uh, to the unproven guys to prove themselves. You know, they're going to be like, I want a taste of that. Exactly, I want to taste of those jersey Hopefully. sales. I'm going to beat him in practice, and that's going to yeah. make them better. Hopefully, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it seems like players like him, you know. Yeah. So I, I I, think he is, for the most part, a good locker room addition. I think the social media thing is a bit blown out of proportion when it comes to Jesse Lingard. I mean, yeah, it is kind of childish sometimes, but, like, I mean, if he's just having fun. And honestly, if he's getting the job done, if he's scoring, if he's getting assists, not a single Forest fan is going to care. No. I can tell you that right now. Which that was so, the problem with United. There's no yes. results to back up the dancing. Exactly. None. Well, yeah, not for the past couple of years, at least. Um, but I, I think he's going to come out and be hungry. Like he proved it at West Ham. He's not just going to be collecting the check like he wants to. He wants yeah. to play. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a good move. I'm, I'm really curious what the uh, the listeners think. So leave a comment down below if you think Jesse Lingard was a steal or if it's a terrible decision from Nottingham Forest to go ahead and sign him. Let's keep it moving. Best. This is for the this is for the. Um, the smaller clubs out there, uh, for those of y'all listening, the best non-top six transfer so far. This was for the also the Premier League, Connor. So before you say something that like RB Leipzig did, just... no, it's for some <laughs> league League Two team in France. He's gonna be like Boca just signed him. Like what the? Fuck? Yeah, the don't say Arturo Vidal going to you know, six Flamengo. transfer so far. Mine's got to be the Korean Stallion. Kwang Hee Chan. Finally making it permanent. That was a great move. That's a great move. 18 mil too. I feel like it's a reasonable fee. I feel that's actually a little expensive, honestly. I think he's worth that, but I feel they always underrate Asian players in Europe. Especially yeah. when it comes to fees. And that's valuations. fair. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, what did Minamino go for? Ten or twelve? Ten, and he was he's played in the prem more than Huang He Chan has. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess Huang He Chan being double, almost double the valuation of Minamino, that's a bit crazy. That is a bit crazy. But it's certainly not like the worst value for money move that we've seen. I mean, I still think Leeds have overpaid disturbingly for a lot of players. I mean, and if we want to talk about overpaying. I mean, do I need to bring up Richarlison again? Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That was disgusting business. Um, that was all <laughs> for the shirt. That was all for the jersey. That was for the jersey, yeah. I don't know what it was for. I don't know. I really don't. I'm still trying to be optimistic about that acquisition, but the cost, at what cost? That's how I feel about it. A massive cost. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, think, I, I think I'm going to stick with uh, Coutinho for this. Aston Villa is outside of the top six. I think I'm. Yeah. I think I'm. I think I'm still there. Like I think that's that's really a tremendous uh, piece of business to do. Like uh, nobody else really wanted him, so he was kind of just floating around for free. And I mean, they picked him up, locked him down. That's solid. That's solid. And they the, he is proven. It is like uh, uh, again a win win. You know, like he is he is proven. He's guaranteed. Like, you know that you made a good transfer there. I think that's pretty much beyond 
debate as to whether he's the best. I don't know, but that's what my gut is is telling me is that yes, that is mm. that is the big non top six signing for me. What's hilarious about that is I agree with you, but I actually went with his teammate Bubakar Kamara as the okay. best signing of a non top six club. For a couple of reasons. One, the guy's an animal. He's 22 years old. And again, if he had three, four years on his contract, you're looking at a $45 million transfer fee. Uh, uh, something in that range. Where's um, he from? Uh, Marseille. Marseille. Okay, right. French, but yeah, his, French dude. Oh, he's French. Okay, okay, bad. Well, I'm not sure. So he's French and he's Senegalese. Okay. He def- I don't think he's chosen Senegal, though. Okay. And if he, ha- he maybe he did. I mean, you guys let us know in the comments. Maybe he has, but he hasn't made his debut yet. I did right. see like he was deciding, and he was like leaning Senegal, but I don't think he had actually made a decision yet. Um, that'd be dope for Senegal, dude. That'd be great. I mean, just for that'd Africa, like awesome. gotta like yeah. bring some of that talent back home. Um, but the fact that this guy is, was one of France's most promising young midfielders, and he was he was being looked at by a lot of big clubs. Basically, he's he's at like the peak of signing for Atletico Madrid and then snubs them to go to Aston Villa because he wants to play with Steven Gerrard. I just think it was a, it was a goddamn coup on their part, like absolute robbery. I mean, the fact that he snubbed Atletico Madrid and and Diego Simeone, who could have made him a freak. The team that won La Liga two years ago to go be with the 14th team in the Prem. I mean, Jake, you and I talked about this like several episodes ago. I was like, God damn, what does it say about the purchasing power of the Prem that these guys are going to snub La Liga giants like Sevilla and Atletico Madrid to go play for some below yeah. average Premier League team? I just, I can't believe, I still can't believe that Atletico didn't get him and that he chose a team that, I mean, if they really ball out, they finish eighth. I mean, if they ball if out, they, they finish really, eighth. really, yeah, no, that is, that is the upper reaches of what they can achieve. Yes. And, and, I don't know. I think he, Bubakar Kamara himself personally is probably overvaluing a little bit just how much Steven Gerrard individually can improve him. I think, I don't know. I don't think it's going to work out well um, for, for either Gerrard or Kamara in this situation, but I think it's a goddamn steal, man. Like a free transfer, bro, for him. Insane. Yeah. Insane. We got 55 for Richarlison. Come on now. Like, absolute steal bro absolute steal that's that was mine no that's that's a that's a pretty damn good shout uh i think overall i still take coutinho he's still in my head like world-class superstar rank and i i would i would take that you know especially after you know the performances that he gave last season i would still lock him down for that super cheap price tag i don't know how much he's getting paid weekly but uh, yeah, the free transfer, that's that's pretty nasty, nasty business. Yeah. And Robbery. I, well I said. think it's that's underrated in football when you get these guys on freeze. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's yeah. just I, it's not quite as sexy ever because we like to see the oh, my club spent 80 mil on this guy. But like we got Ivan Perisic on a free and that's probably the second best transfer behind Eves Basuma that Spurs have made. And no one gives a shit that we got Perisic. Like literally, no yeah. one cares. I'm, yeah, it was like a blip. Older. It was yeah, a exactly. Blip, this transfer window. It was like tweeted out by Sky Sports once. Man ain't been mentioned since. And I'm like, which is crazy because he's linked up with Conte before, and they know how to work together. So I think he's going to be kind of deadly next season. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Like I said, I think behind Basuma, it's the best, the best move that we've had. Uh, for Spurs in the in the window so far, um, I do want to. I had a I had a dark horse for best non top six move, and this is like for people who probably play football manager are the ones who would know this. But Gavin Bazunu signed with Southampton for fifteen mil, and Connor, this is a guy that you might t- want to take interest in because he's, he's a keeper, he's, right? He's Irish, yes, the goalkeeper, really. This dude, and he was at Man City. Wow, but he never broke they're, in. They're U twenty threes, right? Yeah, he was on loan at. Portsmouth and damn it what was the other club I can't remember where it was the other season wow. but very highly rated very young goalkeeper he might be 20 straight up 20 he might be 21 oh, yeah, and I think Southampton they just lost their goalkeeper who's now the backup at Spurs and 15 mil 
for a guy who's probably going to be the Ireland number one very soon, 20 years old, he could be the Southampton starting keeper for a decade or more. I, yeah. th- I thought that was great business. I was honestly shook when I saw Bazunu went to Southampton. And he went there because he said he said in a couple of interviews, like, I'm not going anywhere unless I'm the number one. So, like, Tottenham are really trying to get him. But we have Yoris for better Nobody's or for worse. breaking over him, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's been the club captain for years. Yeah. He's still got, you know, one or two good years left. But Bazunu, even though he's just 20, he was like, nope, I want to be the starter. So, I'm not going anywhere where I'm not going to be the That's number good. one. That's good. I mean, we talked about that. We want we need a more American keepers. I was about to say, that, you know, right? could use some of that mentality, Zach Steffen and uh, Matt Turner. Yes. Yeah. That's like, who could okay. use that. Yeah. That's who could use some of that. But anyways, that was just that was just like a little trinket I want to drop in there. I've been watching following Bazunu for a while, mm-hmm. and I just cannot believe he's gonna be at Southampton. I think it's great, great business for them, I have to say. You um, know the price that they had to pay to get Bazunu though, right? No. They had to lose Shane Long. Oof. R.I.P. to Shane Long, an Irish legend. The An greatest Irish, Irish player. The greatest <laughs> Irish striker of all time. <laughs> oh, my God. FIFA FIFA favorite, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Um, Would score worldies with that man. Yeah. Who is Robbie Keane? I don't know. I, I just know. never Shane heard of that man. Never, never heard of that man's name in my life. Couldn't put a name. <laughs> I could give two fucks about anyone with the last name Keane. It's all about <laughs> Shane Long, baby. <laughs> God. I will never forget some random ass goal that Shane Long scored against Germany. Yeah, it was random it ass. Been, it might that have been a World Cup huge. qualifier. No, I know, that and was, it was like that was beat good. Germany yeah. in Dublin, and I was yes. like, this man's the goat. And then I don't think he scored a goal for Ireland since. No, like Ireland hasn't scored a goal since. As far they as are as trash, since. they are. And they need Bazunu awesome. starting ASAP. Yeah, accurate, accurate. You get Bazunu on the pod. Ah, okay. I also didn't have this prepared for you guys. So I'm going to keep you on your toes real quick. Oh, my God. (laughs) What do you think is the worst transfer so far? Ooh, I don't think you want to hear what I'm going to say. I want. I'm really really fucking horrified that Richarlison is going to be absolute fucking dog shit for you guys, dude. Yeah. I have been so scared. And I have this like gut feeling that that shit is just not going to work out. Like, I, I get, I'm probably going to get some fucking hate for that. But, dude, I, as soon as I saw that 60 million price, I was like, ooh, this is a bad, bad move. Ironically enough, I think if he went for 40, I think it would be a good transfer. Yes. I think that he his ego would be tempered. He'd be like, I'm going to prove that you should have paid a lot more. But I think, I think that he might rest on his laurels here, and he might not um, put the work in that he needs to, you know, cement himself in a, a, a Tottenham team. That that I mean, to be completely frank, it feels like God is working against that fucking team. <laughs> it literally feels like God hates the Tottenham Hotspurs, and you know him and the rest of he might England. Run. But I mean. It, it, that's what it feels like. And you have to be, you have to defy God to actually, you know, work with that team and, and, and to, to drag them to something. And I, I just don't think he's that guy. I do not think he's that guy. I think that's an extraordinary amount of money and right. foolish, 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 foolish. He went for more than Gabriel Jesus did. Wild. It's wild. It's to insane. Me. Like, Insanity. look, like, nobody. Nobody on Everton should be going for more than 30 mil. The entire team is ass. All of them. They're all <laughs> terrible. I don't want Anthony Gordon. No, no, fuck that. They're all terrible. 65 mil or 55 mil, whatever oh, it was God. for Richarlison. It's crazy. And I yeah. see so many Spurs fans like, we got a lot of hate on our TikTok. When I was, we were saying like, it's just not a good signing. Like value for money is not a good signing. And everyone's like, well... The attitude that he brings. I don't need attitude for fifty-five million. You want attitude? Fucking sign a strength and conditioning coach who's bald and an asshole. Yeah. Pay him fifty k annual salary. That's where you get the attitude from. You don't pay these types of fees for those type of intangibles. You need yeah. results on the pitch. And his play just does not back it up. He's not even gonna start. 
is crazy. The, like, I, I was saying, an alternate universe where Spurs made different signings, I think it's a good move. But the fact that we needed help at fullback, we needed a creative midfielder, and we need a center back. And we went out and bought like a luxury signing in the front three. We have the best front three in the Prem. Yeah. Why are you spending half the transfer budget and on our strength? Like, oh, but Jack, depth. Okay, so go sign Shane Long. I'm just kidding with that. <laughs> but but seriously, like get somebody in the 10 to 20 mil if you want depth. You know what Man City yeah. did when they got depth? They spent 40 mil on Calvin Phillips. That's depth. It's 55 on Rich Harlison. What the hell? People in Brazil probably saw the news and were like, why? Yeah. I was going to say no mames, but they probably didn't say that. Uh, <laughs> There's a Portuguese equivalent out there. Yeah, I'm Portuguese. Sure. Somebody, yeah. Help, somebody help us it's out like, in the It's like now mames or something like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, God. And there goes the public outcry for Connor to be sacked. Yep. Get, <laughs> get fucked. They're our next door neighbors. Oh, my God. <laughs> You can fucking oh, no, dude. I mean, given what I know about the uh, Brazilian uh, social climate, I don't think any of them would be even moderately offended by that joke. They'd probably think it wasn't enough. Um, but anyways, that's a, what I'm trying to say. Is that's a great shout, and I really, in my heart, agree with you. Just I went with somebody else, just for the Here. sake of discussion. I went with. This is gonna piss probably both of you off. I went with Lisandro Martinez. 63 million? Nah. Are you having a laugh? Yeah. 63 million. Yeah. For so a guy? you get the. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Wait, All right. Wait, 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 wait. Tell me why it's an A plus transfer. Go ahead. Did we overpay? <laughs> yes. Are we united? Yes. So those two things in the same sentence means that we're automatically going to overpay. When you couple that with in Ajax that is selling off their whole starting 11 plus more Fucking as a fire, fire sale. sale. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Where their, their board is literally swimming in a swimming pool full of Euro dollar bills right now. They're like smog in the Hobbit right now. Yeah. I, I mean, it is crazy. <laughs> they, they have a dungeon full of gold jewels and anything that they could ever get their hands on from, how much uh, money that they've been getting in this summer from these transfers? I, you know, I bite them in the ass. You know, bites IX in the ass. That they sold their entire first team. Is it like the dwarves? They, Have they dug too they deep? They are somehow still going to be good. They're going to. They are. They are really going to. Yeah, they they are going to once again somehow find randos from South America, from Eastern Europe, from. Maybe China or India. I like the shit on whoa, them. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're going too far with that. There are no <laughs> prospects know, we, in those countries. Let's some, stop playing. Let's stop playing. They, they find never produce some, anything. They, they, they find some players from these more of these unknown countries, and they develop them. They start in the Dutch league, and they get good, and then they sell them off. I mean, that that is their model from for the past... 10 years it seems like and it's and it's worked it's worked all the time yeah. like to uh, perfection like it, it feels like they must have the smartest front office in in world football it feels like, like their scouts guys, are godlike they, they would they, not they, they they're gods. too smart godlike. they would not have sold all those guys if they didn't have people coming in or like a plan to back them up so maybe they dip off for like a year two years after that, I, I think they're back in full force and United's going to pay another fucking, you know, uh, a, a dragon's hoard for another undersized Argentinian eventually. Yeah, I think to further my point, we paid 80 million for Maguire. So this is a steal if you compare that. Those two transfers. Yeah, but like comparing one car crash to another, that right. like, you know, ended up killing like a school bus full of what? children. Like One's not, not determined to be a car crash yet, though. But he's also not not a car crash. I mean, we haven't seen this guy play. Look, 63, it, I, 63 million. 
Go ahead. I go will ahead. say, look, Lisandro, he's he's got some opportunity for growth. Um, he can play in a variety of different positions. I really hope they don't start him at center back. I think that they're looking for like a Mascherano sort of uh, vibe because Mascherano wasn't exactly the tallest either. But you put him in that central defensive role. And I mean, he got the shit kicked out of him against Belgium in 2014. But I mean, th there's that photo of uh, what's his fucking name? The other Man United midfielder, uh, uh, Fred. The no, the fro with the big fucking fro, the big Belgian guy. Fellaini. What's his Fellaini. Name? Fellaini. Oh. Thank you so oh. much. Like, there's that picture of uh, Mascherano like getting up off the ground after Fellaini completely bodied him, or maybe it was another midfielder. But like, he still was a dominant force, Mascherano. I mean, so. I think that it could pan out well, but I, I, as an out and out center back, I, I it's scary. It's scary. So I, I can agree with the hesitance with which people uh, speak about that transfer. You know, I, I I'm not very optimistic. I think it's I, I'm scared for Lisandro because I I only want the best for him. You know, it's, and. I, I don't know. High, high ceiling, yeah, I yeah. think. But look, look. But I, very I, scary transfer at for a very scary price tag. It yes. could have done so much more. If they had spent that money else, like elsewhere in, in some more smarter moves, like uh, or some some more intelligent moves, excuse me. Um, I, I think Ronaldo would be completely happy, but I don't I don't think he's he's sold on that. You know, I think the whole world knows what was the biggest South American disappointing transfer of the prem this season and it's darwin not nunez? lisandro it's darwin nunez that's that's your worst signing it's either him or sven botman damn okay sven i Bowman? thought you were about to say alvarez just to piss me off I'm pleasantly surprised. No, y'all, no, y'all got him on the yeah. cheap. Yeah, the I know. I was. Too good. He, he I, was I thought he was signing. about to talk shit to me. It's yeah, too good. okay, it's too good. Uh, it's too good. Okay. Let, 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 let me just wrap up my Lisandro thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's how I feel about him. I think he's being seriously overhyped in how he played for Ajax, which is a team that plays in a division where the top four teams are pretty solid. Really, the top two are great. Feyenoord's good. William or whatever the hell they're called are okay, and then everybody else is terrible. Absolutely terrible. He's got seven caps for Argentina, bro. If he was that good, in my opinion, Otamendi's not on the team anymore. Yeah. Otamendi, oh, he's washed. Oh, he's the best days are behind him. That's why I went to Portugal. Then why are you still starting? Oh, really, Sandro Martinez. Why? If he's that good, if he's worth 65 M's, bro. You got to be starting for your national team. How the hell are you not starting for your national team? You got 65 million? It's crazy. That is yeah. crazy. In I mean, defense of Otamendi, he had a really good 2018 World Cup. An excellent one. He was one of the worst <laughs> players in the 2018 World Cup. I will die on this motherfucking <laughs> hill, dude. I'm not kidding. You could leave me here. I'm not leaving. I'm staying he had a good fucking run. He made some crucial mistakes, but uh, for the vast majority of it, I think he was relevant. That being said, he's a leader there, so I think that has to be taken into account. He's a good locker room guy, and and he's really loud in the defense. He's going to be that Sergio Ramos take a red card for the team uh, sort of guy, and that's that's really fucking hard to uh, to break into. So you got to give it a grain of salt. But with the amount of rotation that we've been seeing on the Argentine wings, like the the wing backs, like uh, fucking left back, right back, we have two options for both of those positions. And yeah. the fact that Martinez can't even break into a, a central defensive uh, position or or uh, uh, even starting on on one of the wings, like he can't. It's that's a really high price tag. That's a really high price tag to go for more than Calvin Phillips. That's fucking crazy, dude. He so right now I just checked. Cuti Romero's valuation is fifty million. If you are trying to make the argument to me genuinely that Lisandro Martinez is better than Christian Romero, there is I have nothing to say because you obviously are not watching football with your eyes. I don't know what you're watching with. My ears. You're you're watching with your ears. You're absolutely blind to reality, dude. Romero is an absolute stud. And if they're going to say, 
I mean, obviously transfer market is just, you know, they make up the valuation for these players. It's not spot on, but 15 mil more than Romero, Argentina's best defender, like just crazy that's, to me. And that's the United tax and that's the desperate United tax. That's why it got inflated so much. I just, yes. like, I see, I see Chelsea go and get Koulibaly for 40. And I'm like, why didn't you guys do that? Because he didn't want to sign for us. I could never see Because y'all are toxic and no one United. wants to go to that goddamn godforsaken club. You are a straight hater. <laughs> I don't say it's Ronaldo's fault. You are a Ronaldo hater. It's crazy. Dude, Lucas Quartas got more caps than Lisandro Martinez? That's embarrassing. That is embarrassing. Wow. When? This is the when worst was, signing when, I've ever when seen. When were those fucking caps? Uh, I don't remember that motherfucker. He's got quite a few. Played against Ecuador, Venezuela, Colombia. Holy shit. Chile. Um, Copa America caps, it sounds like. World Cup qualification. Okay. Yeah. He had one Copa America game against Chile. I played the full 90 against in the, in the group stage. Okay. Anyways, that's enough about Lisandro. Uh, Sven Boatman, though, for 40 mil, Newcastle? Thought that was yeah. trash? Why? Because he unproven? Yeah. I mean, he's coming from a Leo side that finished 10th in League Un. Trash. <laughs> <laughs> Just single word, trash. I Well, like, how do you sign a defender <laughs> oh, that can't defend goals? <laughs> You sign a defender, this bad defender. <laughs> you sign a defender who can't defend. I think he is a good defender, though. I just thought Leo were just not that good this season. Which they aren't that good. It's a big gamble for a big price tag, I feel like. Maybe it's if Tim it Way's 20. Spot. Maybe that's why they're not good. Well, I think Tim Way is going to beats, is what I heard. No Holy way. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking kidding me. I'm f- I'm fucked. Oh my god! I mean, that's completely <laughs> believable, though. Like, I was totally fucking with you. Oh, oh my god. gosh! Oh my god! I think Jesse Marsh is just like assembling the Concacaf Avengers. Like he's gonna be John <laughs> David <laughs> over there. He's gonna sign his Stachio from Canada. I mean, it's oh my literally. god! Literally. Honestly, that'd be sick. That would be Let's get some Mexicans that would be over there. Insane. That's what we need. God damn it. That's a it's like I just don't know enough about Sven Boatman to say like it's good or bad. I just know he's tall. Isn't he six five or six six? He's huge, right? Uh I think he's below that. Okay. Either way, that's fucking that's massive. Low. Like over that's six massive two, for it's a gamble. fucking solid. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Massive size wise. Yeah. I massive think he is around wise, yeah. six foot, six two. I mean, every time I look yeah. at these players' heights, it's always a meter, so I've got to do some calculus in my brain to uh, convert it. Yeah. Looks like he's six four according to Wikipedia. That's big. Yeah. Look, size That's size big, fucking yeah. matters in the prem. You need a big fucking lad there at the back to scare the shit out of people, you know? Because like a guy that size is going to scare the hell out of Gabriel Jesus. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Dude, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it's just me um thinking that you hating taking what? You hating on Newcastle. No, I'm not hating on Newcastle. I think I I am more hesitant on gambling on players from League Un. Okay. But and you if you're can... going to gamble, it's got to be like in the 10, 15, 20 mil max type transfer fee. But y'all gambling 60 mil for Lissandro Martinez. Ain't French. Oh. It, it ain't the French league. It it's ain't League Un. It's worse. Even better. That doesn't make any sense. He's proven under our current manager. In the Dutch league. He's proven playing under against farmers and potters. <laughs> but not waiters or teachers. That's Southampton. Oh, my God. That's a, howl, that's a howler of a take. The Dutch dude. fucking economy is fucking based around. <laughs> fucking guys who work in the vineyard all day. That's who he's playing against. <laughs> Oh Holy my god, shit. they caught me off guard. Potters. What do they make? Chocolate, right? The chocolate factory? I think Dutch Cobbler. chocolate. No, they, is thing. No, they made us fucking, fucking flowers, right? They've Isn't got the tulip. They they, they, he works yeah. at the tulip farms over god. there. He, he lives in a windmill. Yeah, the big windmills, exactly. That's god all they fucking do. Damn it. 
I I'm gonna I think Newcastle were so bad defensively and their center backs uh-huh. are trash that I just can't give the, I can't say the transfer's bad because it's better than LaSalle's. Like I don't need to see the guy play. He he probably better than LaSalle's right off the bat. I'm and forty M's that. for a uh club that's now backed by a nation. Um, you know, business ain't that bad. No. Um, let's keep it pushing here, folks. Okay. God damn it. I feel like this could be a 30 minute discussion. We'll see how long this goes for. <laughs> what team will underachieve the most this season? Uh, I'll, I'll kick this one off. Uh, the first one's a shout. And then the second one, um, well, no, the, the first one, hey, I, look, okay, I got two teams for this. Uh, Everton, for sure. I think they're going to fucking underachieve. That's a fucking cold ass take. Super cold. Everybody fucking knows it. They're not good. Lampard, I, I don't have fucking faith in him. Like, everybody going, says, he's going to do good in Everton, and then Tuchel's going to get sacked. He's going back to Chelsea. No, no, shut up. Shut up right now. Shut your mouth. It's they're not good they're not a good team they've got a worse fucking locker room uh uh fucking vibe than than manchester united i i think the lads need a serious serious overhaul somebody to drag them up from the depths and that's not even that's not even in sight for them like they're still yeah in the mud like these guys that the, they're in the tunnel it's darkness there's no hope Maybe there's a light yeah. at the very end, but you can't even tell what that is. Like, right. the the light at the end of the tunnel is that they have moderate financial backing, and that's it. But they seem to squander that season after season. So I I really have absolutely no idea as to um any any bright spots in this coming season. I think it's going to be bad. Everybody's going to check the fucking Everton scores, and just, everybody's going to go ooh like that. They've been having a quiet transfer window too. Mm-hmm. They got Tarkowski and Ben Me, I want to say. On a free, I think. The only players wow. I can name off relegated teams. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good at all. Okay, Lampard's so that's not the guy that's going to bring them to relevance. That's the cold take. I think the three of us all agree that Everton are not going to do well. What's the yeah. uh, what's the hotter take? No, the hot the hotter take is going to be Leeds. I think Leeds uh, has mm. uh, oh a shit ton of stuff. Uh, working you're and a, spent a, a ton of money You've seen there. the light i'm really kind of horrified that it's not going to pan out and you know american talent is going to fall into irrelevance once more um i i have high hopes for brendan aronson um but i mean outside of that i'm i'm really scared that the other guys aren't going to pan out i'm really scared that they're not prem material um and and yeah yeah, it's a, it's a shit ton of money to spend, and I think there's yeah. a world where it pans out, but uh, it's it's scary to me. So let me ask Very you: scary. so what? How would you define underachieving for Leeds? We're talking like fifteenth. Under underachieving for Leeds, I I think it's the very bottom. They are they are on a course for either incredible success this season or incredible failure. Mm-hmm. It's it's either going to be a fucking uh, a renaissance in American soccer or we're just going to fall by the wayside once again. Like I think relegation is is what they're looking at worst case. So yeah. I agree with you. That's what I said, and y'all trashed me last time. Yeah, and I I will continue to trash you for that because there's there's a good side to this, but I I I am really scared that it's not going to pan out, and they're not going to keep uh, Marsh around or the American lads around long enough to uh, to pan out. Such okay. a communist take. <laughs> Socialist. I will just remind everybody that my Leeds prediction was that they'll get relegated if Jesse Marsh sticks around. I think if they bring in a more experienced manager, I think they stay up. I just don't think Marsh is ready for the Prem. I really don't. Anyway, so you, Jake. you don't think it's the players. You think it's the the coach. I think they're bringing in a lot of unproven guys. Yeah. And I yes. think they're more proven players on the team with that championship and Premier League experience. I think they're aging a bit. The injuries are starting to pile up. The injury record is concerning. Um. And I don't know if Marsh tactically can adjust to the Prem. Like, yeah, they brought in some reinforcements, but man, I still think it's the same situation last year where they're one or two injuries away in the front front three, front four, to where it's like, shit, we're back to not scoring goals. 
That's what I think. That's when they got to put Luke Ayling up top. I love Luke Ayling, dude. I love me some Luke Ayling. Let's let's be let's be real about that. But he just can't do it by himself. No. Well, I mean, maybe Tyler Adams will carry them. We'll have to see. Who's your team that's going to underachieve, Jake? I put two because I kind of put them in the same boat. They seem to be kind of in open waters with a leaky boat and it's kind of flooding in. Um, I put Lester. Good shout. Good shout. That is a good shout. I... I didn't know uh, that Yuri Tillemans is rumored to leave. That'll be a huge loss for them. And if they lose James Madison, they are fucked. They cannot rely yeah. on a 35-year-old Jamie Vardy to, to help them To do everything. Out. And yeah. they do have Iha Nacho, but I mean... Yeah, yeah but not, there's, there's no one to get these guys the ball. Up yeah, the midfield now. would be the concern. You know, at, unless there's some lad in the academy there that I don't know about, or they're going to find some random French farmer and bring him to Lester and, you know, train him up and be like, yo, this is a football. He's been like, wow, I've never seen this before. Um, <laughs> I agree. I, I like the, uh, the running uh, joke that the entire European economy is based off of farmers, <laughs> potters, cob- cobblers, and fucking tulip growers. Yeah. <laughs> teachers. Dutch- teachers. <laughs> teachers. <laughs> All teachers. Um, so that's my first shout. My second is Brentford. Oh, okay. Second season um, slump? Second season slump. I mean, this is their second season in the Prem. To my knowledge, I don't think they've signed anyone this season. Which, for a team that didn't do very well in their first mm. season, obviously, I you would think that they would know what sort of reinforcements that they need. But they haven't been doing shit. So I don't know if they're like financially hurting and... They don't have the funds to uh, get any people in or something. But, you know, when you compare it to a team like Forest, where they're spending 100 mil on players and they just got promoted. And then you see Brentford not spending shit and losing Erickson on the free. You know, it's kind of a, a stark contrast between those two teams. And it's like, I don't know how much longer they're going to last. You know, I think they'll probably stay up this season, hopefully. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I think they'll stay up because I like Thomas Frank. I rate him. I think he's a good manager. I'm looking right now. They did sign Aaron Hickey, that like the very um the very young Scottish fullback, I believe okay. he is. Okay, so they signed, yep, yep, I see. They signed two very young, 21 and yeah, 20. That's the concern, yeah. From Hull as well. So championship. Oh, and they got Ben Me, not Everton. I said Everton got Ben Me earlier. That was a mistake. He went to Brentford. I, I I think because of the quality of Thomas Frank, they'll stay up. But I don't think they'll – what were they, 12th or something this season? I don't think they'll do that well again. I think I it's going to be – I think they're going to be battling to stay up. And only because Everton are so bad are they going to be safe. They were 13th. That's pretty damn good. That's pretty damn good for them, I would say. Um, My team that underachieves – is Manchester United. I think underachieves? I think you all underachieve, bro. They've been underachieving. What is your definition of underachieve? Not winning mm-hmm. shit. Relegation. But our expectations are not to win anything. That's not true. That is so true. Dude, there are so many people acting like Ten Hag is Jesus Christ, and he's mm-hmm. just going to carry you guys to relevancy. And that's not... Have- the, like... Everything in United is a question mark. Eric Ten Hag is a question mark. He is not proven in the, like how many managers have we seen boss it up in other leagues? And everyone's like, oh my God, they just signed this elite manager. They come to the Prem and they just can't get it done because it's harder over here. In the Dutch league, you don't get to just focus like over there, you get to focus on the Champions League and those four games a season you play PSV and uh Feyenoord. And then you kind of you, you know, you're not really that stressed against the other teams. You don't get days off in the Prem. We don't know how he's going to handle that. Honestly, on a, on a side note, how he's been handling this Ronaldo situation is a little concerning to me. I'm going to be honest. I, I kind of expected him to be more That's of it. a hard ass and like set the record straight. Kind of giving him too much of a leash, in my opinion. It's a little worrying, I have to say. Just not a red flag, but a yellow flag. Flag on the play, five yards, you know, back it up. 
Um, and I think a lot of the signings that you guys are making are also a lot of question marks. Like Malasia could be a beast. We don't know. Alessandro Martinez. Let's hope to God that he pans out. He pays 65 mil for him. You know, Frankie de Jong, that may or may not happen. There's just a lot of question marks around Man U. And I feel like a portion of the fan base is incorrectly incorrectly diagnosing the problem as like managerial to a degree and being like, oh, Ali sucked. Oh, Ralph didn't have a clue. But now we have a proper manager and he's going to come in and we're going to do all this stuff. I don't know, dude. I think it's going to be a lot more difficult than you guys think, especially with how good Arsenal have gotten, how many reinforcements Spurs have gotten. Like, let's not even sleep on West Ham, dude. They made some really good getting Skamaka in. I can't yeah, even believe they did that. Huge. Like Antonio might not start for them anymore. I mean, who knows? I just think the guys around you have improved too much, and there's still too much toxicity straight up. And I think it's going to sink y'all. And then my second was Leeds, but we don't really need to go into that because I've already made several uh, tangents about that. I think that's a fair assessment of United. But I didn't put them as an underachiever because I'm not expecting... I'm expecting like a fifth or a sixth place finish with maybe... What did I say last time? Try to win the FA? Try to win one piece of hardware? I think I fifth would be great. I don't think they finish top six. I've Ooh. seen like a lot of top four predictions and I was Ooh. like, no. So, yeah. I, I, I don't they, think top four. I think top six. I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, I'm man. scared. If if Ten Hogs the guy, then yeah, top six. But I think I'd I, go sixth. Yeah, you got to give Walter White one season. <laughs> you have to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But this first I think season, you got to give him two ugly. or three. You got to give him two yeah, or three yeah, yeah, if yeah. you want somebody to actually at least one season is what I meant. That yeah, yeah yeah agreed agreed. It's still way too early. There's a lot of intangibles there, um, but yeah as to whether they're going to underachieve or overachieve i don't think anybody in the world has a good fucking idea of where man united is at i don't even think man united knows i think they've just got to go out there and talk their shit and play their game and and go home and go home and sleep and eat and bleed football and that's it that's all that they can focus on anything else the fugazi shit that's that's around floating in the ether and the side guys you can't you can't focus on that yeah. literally just ignore everything and and just focus on effort that's the only thing that's going to drag the lads out of there so as to whether they're underachieving for a club like man united anything outside of top four is underachieving but with their yeah. current state i think uh i think if they finish top six they overachieve and if they finish yeah. outside of the top 10 they're they're underachieving quote unquote i don't know yeah yeah like uh, I, I will say i think according to the standards and expectations of the average man you fan i think they will disappoint yes I'll say that correct yeah i think people who you know see see the truth i think men you will play exactly how, how those people predict kind of in that like seventh to sixth space let ten hog just flush the shit out from the club Give him a full season, just like Arteta got to really like, okay, what am I working with here? Yeah. And then make the yes. serious improvements in the next transfer window. And then the Correct. expectation after next season, after this season has to be trophies. Absolutely. Yeah. Latest, I think. Um, let's wrap up with one last topic. Let's bring it back to the U.S. We have no choice. We're morally obligated to discuss U.S. men's <laughs> national team whenever possible. Which American do you guys think will perform the best this season in the Prem. Connor, you go first. So we had another uh, <laughs> another topic that we're not going to hit, which was uh, which team do we think will overachieve? And I was going to say fucking Leeds United. <laughs> you going to say Leeds are overachieve? Leeds are going to overachieve because my boy Brendan Aronson, baby. I think he's going to be the American in the Prem this year. I Didn't know you say I they're going to underachieve? I, I did, yes, for context, because I know we're going to clip this motherfucker up. I just said that they're going to underachieve. <laughs> what the fuck? 
But I think Leeds is, Leeds could overachieve this season too. I, I really That's the do most think. illogical backward statement I've ever heard in my life. What do you, I literally said it when we were talking about it. They are on a crash course for great success or great failure. It's relegation or they're going to finish. Great paradox. Just the, outside Le- the Leeds the is going to underachieve I think, but I over- and overachieve. I think in in the uh in the grand Look, I I also had Newcastle pegged for that, but that's not what we're talking about. I think that Brendan Aronson uh, could really pop off this season. I really want him to. I think he got that. He got that dog in him, and I yeah. think that he could come out and yeah. fucking be a force. Like even if even if Leeds underachieves, that guy's gonna run his fucking boots into the ground. I mean, I don't know who the hell sponsors him or what what boots he wears, but they're gonna have to send him like five pairs a week. Because, I mean, the motherfucker is absolutely going to put his heart and soul into this. And I'm just praying to God that he doesn't get, like, injured or something. <laughs> Fucking knock on wood, dude. Because, I mean, I, I really think the guy is poised for something crazy. Especially with the other Americans there. It's going to feel a little bit like home. He's got a fresh challenge in front of him. I, I, I really am expecting a lot from this kid this season. I really think he's got it in him. Okay. Jake, is that who you had? I did not have Aronson. I have? had a Fulham guy. Can you no, guess you one? did not. You had Dude. Matt Turner. <laughs> no, you did not have Jedi. Why would I not have Jedi? Bro, you're going to get exposed. You think? I think you get exposed. I'm scared, no. Mm-hmm. Absolutely exposed. No. I rate him pretty highly. Oh, my, I mean... Look, I just don't think he's prem level, to be honest. I don't think he's gonna be and like it's Fulham, bro. Man's gonna be under pressure the whole game, every game, all season. Like he's just gonna be in his own box the whole season. He's gonna be yeah. playing left sided center back. That's literally what it's gonna be. I rate him highly, and I think I would be very pleased if he started every game in the prem, because we need one yeah. of those guys for the U.S. Men's National Team. Yes. I like Jedi. I think he's very good when he plays for the U.S., arguably our best player during qualifying. Certainly was the man in the match in a few games. But the Prem, man, it's going to be interesting to see how he how he handles that physicality and the, and the speed of play. I think he's going to struggle with, with the speed of play especially. You know, if teams have a high press against Fulham, I could see him... Making some mistakes. They just need to be yes. smart with positioning. Now, Tim Ream, that man toast. <laughs> he way too slow. He's he way how, too slow. How old is Tim Ream? What? Let me see Tim Ream. He got to be what? 32. 32? That's my 34. Guess. Oh, God. Oh! He's getting, <laughs> shit, he's getting cooked out there. He's getting cooked, man. Yeah. I mean, he's already oh. gotten relegated like twice. So, and Fulham, bro, I just don't think, they just don't have... What it takes. Like with Brendan Aronson, Leeds are a better team than Fulham. That's yes. why I think he's in a better position to succeed. Same with like Tyler Adams. Fulham, I, I think even if Jedi is ready for the Prem, let's say I'm wrong, I just think the team is going to make him look bad. I don't think it's going to give him a lot of opportunity to succeed and look like a star because he's going to be defending for his life every single game. Possibly. I mean, Fulham stay up, massive achievement if they stay up. Like, I feel like that is the objective, is 17th. Just get 17th. That's the hope. I went with Chris Richards with Palace. I don't think he's going to hurt. I don't know. I think you will see him get a couple starts. I was I was listening to what Patrick Vieira was saying about him. Seems like he was really really excited to get Chris Richards over, and it also seemed like he alluded to the fact that he might be playing at right back um, wow. for parts okay. of the season or or, or fullback. Um, Palace they have a good defense, you know, playing as to Mark Gahey and uh, who's a Danish Danish lad? I can't remember his name right now. Anderson, I think. Um, yeah. He's a stud. Crystal Palace he's underrated. Like he's really dark underrated. Horse to overachieve this season, so I think he'll be in a pretty good setup. I just don't think their ceilings high enough to uh, to 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 cancel out some of the other selections. But I think that's a really good system that he could slot into. 
Um, it's not going to be too much pressure, you know, like yes. I'm scared that a lot of these guys don't have the constitution um, to withstand the pressure and, and to like recover after uh, the inevitable mistakes that they're going to make. Um, Cause we, the United States men's national team players just don't have the medal that a lot of these guys have like mentally. Um, but I think that'll be a good position for him. Maybe he starts, you know, one in every three games or something like that. That's, that will be a massive amount for him. And if, if he can play, and if he if he solidifies and gives good perform even consistent performances there, that'll be solid. It's a good shout. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that as well. I think when you look at guys like Aronson and and Leeds being a higher profile club, I do wonder if the expectations are a little cumbersome to him. Whether whereas I think Chris Richards, it's Palace, it's more low key. He probably won't start from day one. Um, no. Palace don't have the depth, so like one injury and he's like, he's starting in the back. He's in, he's the shoe in. Which I think is a good position. You know, give him time, let him let him get up to speed in training, and then he'll answer the call when needed. As opposed to yes. Brendan Aronson, Brendan Aronson is obviously being brought in to be one of the primary threats on leads. Like it's going to yeah. be him, Jack yeah. Harrison, and Bamford. Like you guys got to keep us in the prem. You guys got to win his games. Whereas they're not looking at Chris Richards like, okay, dude, you need to come and, and play like a boss or we're getting relegated. I mean, Palace are not getting less relegated. Pressure. A lot less pressure. But right? I think Aronson can handle that. Like, if Aronson, like, we've seen him make mistakes. We've seen him, like, turn the ball over and, and do stupid young American kid shit. But he always gets back up and he's right fucking there. And he doesn't make mistakes after that. Like, you never see him, like, fucking, what, turn the ball over and then slide tackle somebody for a fucking free kick and enemy in the, you know, in our own fucking box. Like he's not going to do that. The guy yeah. gets back up and he plays his heart out even after he makes a mistake. I think he's smart. He's capable and he's going to learn from those things. I, I, if there's one American that can handle the pressure, I think it's him. And, 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 th and that's why I picked him. Oddly enough, I also had a, I'm starting to have a good feeling about uh, Pulisic. I think him and Sterling are going to vibe. And I think he's going to learn a lot from him. And I think Pulisic has got a lot to prove, but I, I don't think he's mentally as strong as Aronson. So if Aronson develops like a Pulisic level of skill and keeps his own mentality, that's, that is a brand that the U S men's national team severely needs. And I think it's a brand that can survive in the prem. If Pulisic so. can start. Right. No. Yeah. But I'm talking about Aronson. I'm talking about Aronson right now. Like if Aronson achieves like a Pulisic caliber of skill, he's yeah. got the mentality to really break through and solidify. And he's in a he's in a team that's that's going to expect him to do that. You know? No, I think all the building blocks are there for Aronson to succeed. Yeah. It's just yeah. uh, if he's actually yes. at that level or not is unproven yet. But yeah. yes, correct. I Agreed. am hopeful. I'm hopeful as well. No, he's a good shot. I, I actually a had shot. a I had Crystal Palace as my team that would overachieve. Yeah, they've, they've got a dirty lineup. They do, and they got they're, the kids to back it up, baby. They're attacking three are, right. are fucking dirty, you're damn right. Uh -huh. And they're like criminally underrated. I feel like they are, and I think that's good for them. I think that's good for them. It's like them and like Newcastle. They've been kind of like quiet. They have not like complete. At least Newcastle hasn't completely balled out like people have expected. Whether they wanted to and are just being held back by the 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 league by the fa or whatever is a different discussion but they've been quiet they've got some shit working in the background they're not sitting idly by so i i think we've we've got a lot to yeah. see from crystal pie that's yeah i completely yeah agree. I, I think look they're starting 11 is good i think depth is an issue for all yes. of these clubs that don't have like massive transfer budgets but if i had to pick you know some clubs out, like in the prem that i want either a, an american or a mexican player to go and develop Crystal Palace would be on that list. Fulham would not be on that list, which is why Jedi cannot possibly be my selection. Again, it is it is partially that I don't rate him super highly, but it's also because it's just the team that he's on is simply not good. And that's going to be a problem. And even with Pulisic, like, I mean, I'm sure he could go to Leeds and do damage, but he chose and has chosen to continue playing for a team that's very competitive internally and he hasn't proven that he can he can break in and become the bona fide starter for them. So, well, he's got the DePaul haircut now, so I think he's taking the first step towards relevance. That is and, the first step. Uh, 
we can only hope. Yes. I mean, if he carries that into Qatar, he's scoring... Golden boot, probably. I was going to say three goals in the group stage. But yeah, possibly a golden boot, yeah. <laughs> if he was real, he would go skinhead pull. Brace against Wales. That's what I see. <laughs> skinhead Pulisic. Jake, that is offensive. I don't know if I like that look. Skinhead? I, no. He no, would have to like that'd be ugly, bro. A different color, yeah. He yeah. ain't got the head for it. He's too skinny. He'd look like an M frog. He'd look like an amphibian. If he does that. Yeah, it wouldn't look wouldn't look right. Wouldn't no, look right. and he's not he doesn't have like the fucking the base to back that up, you know? He's like really flighty and he's like kind of like, you know, you know, nice Midwestern guy. So you, you want to see man bun man bun Pulisic. At I never said that. I want to see DePaul haircut Pulisic. I want to see fuckboy Pulisic. That's I think man bun is probably final form. But yeah. he probably ain't ready for that. That's gonna be 2026. I think final form is Jack Grealish haircut Pulisic, not Zlatan hair. It only works if the cast. He don't get. He don't got big. the cojones to back up the Zlatan. Haircut, no, you can't right? do Zlatan. You, you have to. Zlatan. No, no, no. He doesn't have the physique. You gotta. Yeah, and, and he doesn't have the ego too. Like you gotta have a certain level of yeah, self love if you're gonna mm-hmm. if you're gonna rock that. He just. I mean, and he gotta win like twenty trophies in Europe before you unlock that that haircut. Yeah. yeah, the DePaul He's, the DePaul haircut is a good step towards. Maybe we'll see it a uh, uh, a permanent move. It is. Speaking of haircuts, if you guys want to see a video, we can rate and review every single haircut for the U.S. men's national team roster. We've already done that with Korea. We've already done that with Japan. Seems like you guys enjoyed that. We kind of forgot that that was a series. But if you want us to bring it back, leave a comment down below. And I don't know, maybe if we get a couple people pressuring us on social media platforms, we'll go ahead and do it. Um, I say we cut it there. We're coming up on 90 minutes now. If you're listening on streaming platforms, make sure you give the podcast a five-star rating. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, leave a like, please subscribe, turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future episodes. Uh, Connor, is there anybody in particular they should uh, share this content with? This episode, I feel comfortable leaving people's family members out. I've already texted them, direct messaged them on Facebook. So Excellent. Your mom, abuelita, girlfriend, they already know. So they already know. They already know. Okay. Jesus. They're aware. Okay. They're on the mailing list. Fantastic. They're on the mailing list. Yeah. We and you're like- not, which is bullshit. So hit the subscribe button. It's embarrassing if your girlfriend knows more about you. Uh, I know, bro. Uh, in regards to football. And I know some of y'all watching this and not hitting the subscribe button. It's embarrassing. Because her, to- she, she already told me she's here for this goddamn haircut video. You know she's going to be in that bitch. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, that I'm haircut video is going to be a banger. We might just do it even if nobody leaves a comment. We might just do it anyways. There's been entirely too much good intellectual, uh, uh, reasonably yeah. researched uh, content on this channel lately. So yeah, we're we're going back to roots. So you guys are tired of like seeing yes. prediction videos and transfer videos. Everybody doing that shit, but so it's time to get to who's got the cleanest fade. The content that you, <laughs> want, that you need to know leading into Qatar. It's what color is fucking yes. Christian Pulisic hair is going to be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we are. All right. yeah. Yes. Formations, tactics, that is irrelevant. It's know, who's looking fresh. Got, you give me and we card. couldn't speak to any of those things anyway. So. Exactly. <laughs> We're like 10 in the back? Yeah. With One a la six, six, four? <laughs> <laughs> a la Egypt and Afcon. God fucking damn it. Oh, Hopefully God. we never have to see that again. Although... I feel like Iran's going to be doing that at Qatar. We don't have to go into that right now. Uh, we also have an episode with Shion from Next Generation Football Hell talking yeah. about go Iran and the boy. World Cup. Yeah, I will link his stuff down below and that video in the description somewhere so you guys can check that out. We appreciate you guys for watching. We'll see y'all in the next video.